A couple of other stories we should hit. Uh, the Fraser Institute says labor laws in Canada are doing damage in the form of restricting uh, choice for workers, discouraging business investment. Uh, they didn't get into whether or not uh, it in fact hurts uh, wages. And in fact, you could, I think you're going to get people who would say the opposite. Now, what the Fraser Institute has done, more or less, is say in places with more flexibility, much lower unionized rates, i.e. these right-to-work states, then their rating of kind of labor mobility, et cetera, is very high. And that in places with strong union representation, they get a really poor rating because there's a lots of inflexibility. I think you find the counter argument being that the places that are right to work have seen wages fall and places with high unionization have kept wages steady. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little tired of these think tanks that just come out constantly with the, with the POV and the analysis that, you know, reaffirms their you know, they're, their world they're pre-cooked ideological conclusions of because if you just turn it over to whatever the corporation wants in terms Agreed. of scheduling, in terms of, it, it goes too far. And, and I, I think a lot of these right to work states are not necessarily states where you would want to, as a blue collar no. worker, be hanging up your shingle. Wait, and in fact, there are, have been studies that show that wages have fallen dramatically in yeah. those states. So good for business, maybe not so good for, for workers.